So guys, things are in full swing right now. You can kind of see I got all the parts laid out on the table. This is the 160 horsepower Turbo YZ build. Uh, as you guys know, my last setup, um, I do have that documented on my channel as well. So definitely check that out. Um, but making a neighborhood of 130-ish horsepower with my last setup. This setup, and this goes for like all the newer people tuning in because I know I've probably beat this horse to death or whatever the saying is. Um, I will be retaining the same turbo kit on this setup. Uh, the only changes that I've made are mostly just durability changes. Um, other than the fact that I did bump up to a 102 millimeter piston. So technically I, I actually don't even have a 450 anymore. It's a 500. Um, but, uh, yeah, for the most part, everything is staying pretty, um, consistent with my last setup as far as part selection. So I'm still running the same gear at turbo, still running the same turbo kit, injectors, fuel system, everything. So, um, I do want to take a minute and give a shout out to cryo heat. Once again, pretty much everything that you see laid out in front of me, they have had their hands on. So you can see the new gear set right here. I do run a WR450F transmission. This has been cryo forged and uh, rim polished by cryo heat. So that's why everything looks like, like damn near billet. <laughs> like literally like even the rod this is a crankworks rod right here but they even polished all this stuff cryoed it crank looks amazing pin is welded uh so this counter shaft right here is just like looks like butter the gears so yeah it looks pretty good can't complain at all so definitely shout out to cryo heat uh Specifically, Josh over there for, uh, you know, being a part of this build. Uh, but yeah, like I said, everything is in full swing. I am still waiting on that cylinder head. Uh, the one that I showed in my last video, I had to send that back out to um, to uh, Racer's Edge. Shout out to Marianne and Brett over there. So, uh, <clears throat> cylinder head is uh, getting the valves installed doing a custom titanium set of ray of valves plus two millimeters um custom kibble white spring kit that is shimmed for boost with you know a little bit more seat pressure to account for the turbo setup um and uh yeah o-ring with the copper gasket like i showed you guys in my last video but uh but yeah you can see right here um i pretty much got all the bearings installed I uh, just Loctited everything and torqued the retain the bearing retainer plates. So uh, that's all good to go. Um, same with this case half right here. Um, but yeah, I, the one thing I will say, I tried that tried and true method that I've been seeing all over YouTube with people heating the cases up and uh, freezing the bearings. But for some reason, I just... I don't know. It was still kind of a, a bit of a pain to get these to uh, to seat in the bores. So um, I did kind of have to whack on those a little bit, even with heat and freezing them. So I don't know. Maybe it was just a, I don't know, maybe a fluke in my case. But I got them in. Good to go. Um, so I'm going to just chip away at this build as much as I can until I get to the point to where I have to put the cylinder head on um because i don't have that right now but looks like i'll probably give them a call maybe this upcoming week to see what the status is because um i have missed out on a little bit of the rise riding season so that sucks a little bit but um i mean it is what it is i'd rather this stuff be right than rush it um as far as ecu system you guys know i do run an ft550 on this setup so shout out to the fuel tech team because they kind of took this build to the new level with their ecu system uh this year it will be pretty cool to uh focus on more of the ecu features that i didn't have a chance to integrate in the last setup so most notably um the pitch and roll sensor that's something that'll be super relevant to this bike, especially making the amount of horsepower that it'll be making this year. 
the nice thing about that sensor is basically um it's essentially a wheelie sensor so in my case that's actually pretty cool because um on this ecu you can actually set up a table that basically has pitch rate in degrees versus ignition timing and it is basically a tool for power management so at x amount of degrees it knows that the front wheel is lifting because when you calibrate it with both wheels on the ground it's basically zero degrees so the scent the gauge is leveled out so as it lifts that front tire it'll be like basically plus one plus two plus etc um and depending on how high that number gets you can have it pull out a, a minuscule amount of ignition timing or a pretty drastic amount so that'll be pretty cool to set up um it will probably take a little bit to get the fluidity there because i don't know just me personally when the when i'm riding on one wheel i really don't want to feel any type of like hiccup in power so i imagine that it would probably have to be a pretty uh linear rate of um ignition retard so i don't know we'll just see when i get there but um i'm gonna keep chipping away at this um probably for the rest of this video i will put like snippets of me assembling this uh this engine block because uh you know there are some down periods in this and i really don't want to bore people with that but uh in other news obviously you can see i got the hemi right here for the s10 i don't want to go off on a tangent but uh but yeah this is still coming together um but uh yeah i gotta try to bat i gotta try to balance the load between each of the three builds um, obviously you guys know the Grom build to the Ducati Panigale 1200cc swap Grom. That Cromali frame is pretty much, uh, getting completed for that right now. So I have a pretty massive update on that as well, probably in about a week or two, but, uh, yep. Enjoy the rest of the video and, uh, yeah, I can't wait to get this thing out. So, see, I got the crank in there. Everything moves nice and buttery smooth. Sorry, I'm trying not to smack this rod. But something that I do to make sure, you know, this stuff isn't spinning dry, especially on startup, I usually just, uh, you can see right here, this is basically where the snout of this crank interfaces with the oil seal or the main oil feed galley. I usually just take like a little pistol squirter like this so I got some 20W50 uh, oil in here, and then I'll just basically, well, you can see, squirt it with oil. And then I'll rotate it. Try not to get oil everywhere, just so those bearings are nice and lubricated. So you can't see it on camera, but there is actually a little bit of oil coming out the side of the, the rod like where the uh, rod bearing is so looks pretty good moves nice and smooth pretty happy uh and you definitely do not want to rotate this why things are dry because you don't want to prematurely wear it so just figure i'll show you guys that but it's uh yeah all right so i had to take a slight break uh there was a, actually a part that i was missing right here on this detent rod or a shifter shaft or whatever it is uh but basically um this is two days later because i had to order that stuff from rocky mountain um so now you guys can see um quite a bit of progress has been made i got the transmission in now um shift drum uh shift forks i even put the piston on now the reason the reason I actually put the piston on before the case, before I put the other case half on is because I just had a bad <laughs> scenario before when I changed the piston on my previous motor, the original motor that was in the bike. Um, and one of the clips fell down into the crankcase. It was kind of my fault because I didn't really put enough like towels inside of here to prevent anything from like falling in. But... I didn't really want to deal with that this time, especially after I <laughs> sealed the case up and had everything torqued. So I just went ahead and I threw the piston on right now. So I got both clips in there. Um, 
yeah so 102 millimeter carrillo piston uh line to line coating that's why it's black on the skirts but uh yeah it's looking pretty good so far so i'm gonna try to clean up the gasket surface and then i pick this up from uh like my local power sports place this is basically like yama bond or three bond or same stuff you would use to seal the case so but for the most part everything is looking pretty good transmission is uh spinning nice and smooth um i did oil it up with this this is what i run in my bike this is what i ran in my 132 horsepower setup on the previous uh jug and piston so matol 15w60 and uh yeah so let me clean up this gasket surface and then try to get this stuff um all ready to go because i think this side right here is like a press fit so i might have to hit heat this up with a torch propane torch so uh but yeah let me uh do this and then i'll be back at it all right guys so finally about to put these cases back together for the final time um i did fight quite an issue with shifting and that ended up being something a little stupid so <laughs> i do want to say check your work no matter how good you think you know something check your work because this could have been avoided and i could have saved a bunch of time but basically the issue that I was having was that this thing would shift from second through fifth like butter. But as soon as I would try to go to neutral and first, it would just bind up. So because of the second gear issue that I had last year, which is the reason why I had to take the engine apart anyways. Um, I was thinking that maybe one of these shift forks that got bent. So I checked that out. I rode it on a flat like marble table or granite table and i didn't see any like wobbling or anything but um so that checked out pretty good um but someone on my tiktok i actually left a comment because they had ran into a similar issue that i ran into or that i was running into and uh they told me to check that shift pin which is on the other side of the shift drum right here is basically where the start and the shift drum both uh, connect or bolt together um, I thought I had it right, but the one thing I will say that's a little difficult about tightening this is you have to fight the spring pressure on the lever arm, and I don't think you could put it on after the fact. You, it's kind of a, I don't want to say a two-man job, but like in my case, I just basically just took a pry, I put this on the floor, took a pry bar, and then I stood on the pry bar, so that way I had two hands to work with, so that way I could align the actual shift pin with, um, the little star mechanism which holds the engine and gear or the transmission and gear so basically the reason why it was binding up is i guess when i had tightened it and granted i was a little bit tired um i think that spring pressure from that arm had like cocked it at an angle when i was like torquing it and um basically it pushed the pin in to where a small only a small hair of the pan was actually sticking out just enough to allow me to shift to the other gears which doesn't make sense because you you would think that it would you know carry over into the other gears when you try to shift too but basically i had to take that shift drum back out i had to push the pan back out and i had to make sure that it went on square so that's basically what caused the issue in hindsight i was thinking about taking this out but you know my naiveness kicked in and yeah that <laughs> yeah anyways it shifts fine now i get first neutral and second through fifth no problem uh the one thing i do want to say is anybody that's attempting to rebuild make sure you put this balance shaft in because a lot of people do forget that um they'll get the cases together get everything sealed up and then they'll realize that they don't have that balancer shaft in so definitely make sure you have that in but without further ado let me put this three bond on the cases and uh, let's get this thing tightened up because this is just, <laughs> this took way longer than it should. But anyways, um, I'm going to put it on time lapse and then I, you guys will see me button the cases up. And I, I actually picked up some brushes for this too to make it a little bit cleaner. So this is how I'm going to actually apply the three bond to the gasket mating surface or to the mating surface on the cases. So 
put it on uh, time lapse and then I'll show you guys that and get this thing tightened up. All right, guys. So, um, got everything together with the lower end. Unfortunately, I did have a mess up with my iPhone, so I lost a lot of video. So, this is just a, <laughs> I guess, a, a cut after the fact. But, uh, yeah, everything went together pretty good. Um, I did have to play around with that shift cam a little bit because, you know, um, unbeknownst to me the actual um the pin that sticks out of it that locks into the actual like five star um shift detent um collar that actually pushed the pin in when i was installing it and you know i was scratching my head like crazy trying to figure out why this thing wouldn't sh shift correctly it just felt like the transmission was binding up so definitely it was an honest mistake on my part um <laughs> But like I said, this is why you got to check your work over and over again. Like, I don't care how good you are at something. It's definitely not a mistake that I thought I was going to make, but I ended up making it. So I had to pull the cases back apart after I had them sealed up. And then I had to remove the shift cam and press that pin back out. And um, yeah, that fixed my issue. So now, as you can see, this thing, put the camera on the tripod. Give me one sec. All right. So, uh. Just for my own peace of mind, I'm actually go through the gears on camera just to <laughs> just to do it. But uh, first, obviously, neutral. Second, third, fourth, and fifth. So we're all good to go there. Same with downshifting. Everything seems to be pretty good. So. And then obviously neutral. So everything seems to be good so far. Um, I do get the piston and everything in here like I showed. Um, but um, probably need to put a towel on there so it isn't banging against these studs. But for the most part, the only thing I'm waiting for now is just the cylinder head. Uh, like you guys saw in my last video, I am having quite a bit of custom work done to my cylinder head by Racer's Edge. Shout out to Brett and Marianne over there. They've taken great care of me um so the major thing that i'm having done is um i'll basically have a top fuel hoop and you use that in conjunction with a uh copper head gasket like you see here so i did have to send my stock gasket that i got with my 102 millimeter big bore kit which racer edge has right now because they're uh machining it for me um, I had to send the stock gasket out to flat out to so they can mimic the gasket in copper. And I had somewhat of a similar setup um, like that last year, but nah, not quite because it didn't use a copper head gasket. It used a MLS head gasket. And then you can see this fire ring around the cylinder right here. So this time around, it'll actually be a, a much more robust wire. And then I'll be using a copper head gasket, which is kind of like the ultimate sealing um, solution for anything that runs, that's making a good bit of power, cylinder pressure, especially in my case where I, it's higher compression and a lot of boost in the equation. The funny thing is if you guys follow my truck build also, um, my 5,000 horsepower street Hemi S10 truck that I'm building, has the same exact configuration for its head gasket. It's a copper gasket with a stainless O-ring or top fuel hoop, which is the correct term. So I can actually show you that and it'll kind of simplify a lot of um, a lot of what I'm saying for you. So let me get the cylinder head off and then I'll just give you a quick peek at what that looks like. And that basically explains what I'm doing for the cylinder head for this new setup. this off really quick you kind of gotta muscle these hips off all right so 
All right, so this will kind of explain it a little bit right here, but you can see the Hemi head for my 5,000 horsepower truck that I'm building. You can see in this deck surface right here around the actual bore, how you have this um, stainless O-ring. And it does, I wish I, I wish I could get it a better angle, but this does sit pretty proud in relation to the actual uh, deck surface of the head. So pretty much how that works is you have a copper head gasket, which I have right here. Oops. I have right here. And then let me pop this off for you. And then I can show you what the other end of this looks like. So. So, um, Cylinder head will obviously have this, this O-ring in it right there, just like the Hemi, literally for, to a T. And then the actual jug, which is this piece right here for the engine, this will have a, this will have a groove in it like this. So basically as you compress that, that copper head gasket, um, that o-ring it pushes it down into this actual um this recess groove right here around the board and it's pretty much like the ultimate seal especially in my case i'm trying to make 160 horsepower on this thing so i think it's well warranted for me to do this and it's kind of cheap insurance so that's kind of the plan with that so sounds like i'll have the head back maybe in about a week so um, I will try to update you guys pretty soon. I'll probably make a separate, or not probably, I will make a separate video when it comes to actually installing the cylinder head on this new motor because it is a little bit of a process because with the copper head gasket stuff, you do want to do a torque sequence. So I'm actually planning on picking up a, um, a hot pot and that's basically so I can uh, pump hot fluid through the engine and get everything um, you know, up to temperature. And then <clears throat> once you do that, you want to, uh, basically unfasten everything in regards to the head and you want to retorque everything again, because, you know, you have to do a couple of heat cycles on this stuff to get it to seal up, um, to its final torch bit. So, uh, but yeah, that's kind of the gist of everything right now. Um, and then obviously be on the lookout for a Grom update as well. Cause I know a lot of people have been asking about that too. That it's a pretty major build that I'm doing, but, um, but yeah, planning on having an update on the Grom this weekend, uh, this video I'll drop tonight. So you guys will literally see this <laughs> like right after I'm done shooting this scene. But, uh, but yeah, that's kind of the, the gist of everything and the status of the turbo YZ and, uh, yeah. If you haven't already, please go subscribe to me on Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube. Uh, please click that like, like button. Please comment and please subscribe. And uh, yeah, I should have that part two of this to you pretty soon. Peace.